In this tutorial, we'll pick up where we left off in our stained glass tutorial. If we zoom in to 100%, you'll notice that our outlines are a little bit soft. They're not quite as smooth as they could be. The outline algorithm is pretty sensitive and it picks up all sorts of little wiggles and other pixels that we kind of wish that it didn't. So one way of dealing with this actually is to scale up the image by 200% and then scale it back down. This is a technique called super sampling and it's usually used for creating better anti-aliasing. You can see that you know on lines like this the lines are a little bit choppy. You've got kind of some jaggies there. And so by doubling the size of the image, then applying tune it to the resized image, and then scaling it back down, the lines tend to take on a smoother effect. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Let's uh, undo tune it, the original application. So that's going to give us our original layer. We're going to go up to the image menu in Photoshop, and we're going to select image size. And we're going to change this to percent. And we're going to set this to 200. So this is going to double the size of our image. And now we're going to apply tune it to that larger image. So let's go down to the filter menu, to digital anarchy, apply tune it. Now you can see that it's got the settings that we originally applied in the last tutorial. And that's fine for that image, but because this image is now twice the size, we're not gonna get the same effect. Our stained glass pieces are probably going to be a little bit too small for this image because they were set up for the smaller image. So what we're going to do is change flatness to 25 or so. And these are going to give us uh, slightly larger pieces so that if I zoom in to 100%, remember that we have to do this if we actually want to see what the effect is going to look like. You can see that this gives us some pretty nice stained glass pieces. And now the other thing that we're going to do is change marker outline thickness to two. Since we've doubled the size of the image, everything else can stay the same, but we really want to increase thickness to two just to get those lines a little bit thicker. So we'll set thickness to two. And so now I'm going to render this back out to Photoshop. I'm going to click OK, which is down in the corner here. Actually, let me close the tune it window a little bit so you can see the OK button and we'll click OK. This is going to take a little bit longer to render because, as you might recall, we doubled the size of the image. But once it does render, we can compare it to the original image. Okay, so once it finishes rendering, the first thing we want to do is go back to image size and scale it back down. So we're going to change that to percent. We'll change that to 50% and we'll scale it back down. So let's compare this to our previous image. So we've got a copy of the previous image here. I'm going to select that and copy it. And we're just going to paste it on top here. And you can see that the original image has these kind of soft pixelated lines. Now if we go ahead and change our layer, let's uh, move the layer palette over here. We'll turn off the old one and show you what the new one looks like. And you can see that the lines here look much cleaner. They're a lot smoother. You don't have the pixelated feel. Um, they, the, cell, the stained glass pieces are a little bit smaller. But by changing crack size and flatness and some of the other parameters, you could increase that if you were unhappy with that look. But I'm actually pretty good with it. And on top of that, you have these much nicer lines. So that's one way of getting a nicer look out of the stained glass effect. It really does produce a nicer look. And now let's take a look at creating smaller pieces. Mostly so far we've talked about creating large pieces, but smaller pieces can create beautiful effects as well. So let's uh, undo all of this. Get back to our original image. And we'll reapply tune it. And let's shrink the interface down again. So let's make a few changes here. We're going to set flatness down to 10. We're going to set crack size down to 3 or 4. We're going to zoom in to 100% so that we can actually see what this looks like on our image. 
So obviously you can get too much detail, so you really want to fiddle around with these settings to kind of get exactly what works for your image. Actually what I'm going to do is set crack size up to 10. Get slightly larger pieces. I'm going to set the blur radius down to its original value of 3. We're also going to come into marker outlines and set the thickness to 1. Remember we had the thickness set to 2 because we had doubled the size of the original image, but now we're just back to the original image at its original size. And now let's cover one last thing. The strength parameter over here increases the contrast of each of the crackle cells. This can create a sort of three-dimensional look, which can be pretty interesting. However, the only problem is that the strength parameter plays havoc with the marker outlines. Obviously, this is not very useful in terms of how the marker outlines look. So what we're going to do is separate the marker outlines from the crackle settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off Reuse Crackle. And then I'm going to set our marker outline settings to match what's in the first three crackle parameters. So we set this to 10. Basically, we're setting all of this to 10. So now you can see that the marker outlines match up with the color regions created by Crackle. We can go ahead and start messing around with the strength parameter and set that up to around 4. And it won't have any, uh, it won't have a negative effect on the marker outlines. Our outlines are still intact. But we're getting this interesting kind of textured effect on the glass pieces. Now you might or might not like this look. But by separating the outline controls from the crackle controls, it gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of using some of these other parameters and getting slightly different looks. However, in most cases, you're usually going to want to have them linked up and you're going to want to have reuse crackle turned on so that these three parameters echo what's in these three parameters. But in this case, it does give you a little bit more flexibility. And I'm going to go ahead and render this out. Click OK, and this will take us back to Photoshop. And so that completes part two of our stained glass tutorial. Hopefully you found it interesting. There's a lot more tutorials, demo filters, and other good stuff at www.digitalanarchy.com. So head over to the Digital Anarchy website, and thank you for joining me.